What's up everyone? So today I wanted to talk about gear. It's very common here on YouTube to hear people say that it's the creativity of the person that's holding the camera that matters much more than the actual camera itself. While at the same time, the person that's saying that usually has tens of thousands of dollars worth of equipment, myself included. And today I actually wanted to talk about the opposite of that statement. When does gear actually matter? So when you're first starting out, I'm a pretty huge advocate of borrowing a friend's camera equipment or just using DIY alternatives to the equipment that is more expensive because working with less or working with more restrictions teaches you how to be more creative with less. And if you can teach yourself how to work in that way, it's going to benefit you in the future. But the thing with using DIY equipment or using constantly borrowed equipment is that it's going to have its availability restrictions and it's also gonna have restrictions in its functionality. And then when you start doing client work, I still find that it's okay to bring that DIY equipment onto set because when you're a beginner, the clients that you're gonna be working with for the most part aren't going to have a lot of money to be spending anyway. And you're probably gonna be doing a lot of spec work. But when you start working with clients that have more money, their expectations of you is also going to go up. And what they perceive as professional is typically when somebody shows up with equipment that they haven't really seen before and equipment that looks a lot more expensive. So for example, if you're showing up on set with the same camera as their photography intern, that's gonna raise some red flags for them. If you showed up on set with a 24 to 70 versus someone who shows up with an 18 to 55 kit lens, most people have seen the 18 to 55 kit lens before, and it's also a very tiny lens. But if you showed up with something beefier, like the 24 to 70, they're going to perceive you as more professional. Or if you show up with a beefier tripod versus the one that you can buy off of Best Buy, that's gonna change the perception of how you are as a professional. Or if you show up on set with a very flimsy light stand versus bringing a C stand on the set, again, they're very used to seeing the flimsy light stands. They're not as used to seeing C stands. So their perception of you as a creative professional is gonna be much higher when you're bringing gear that looks a lot more expensive. I'm not trying to say that buying more expensive gear makes you a better filmmaker, but in the eyes of a person that doesn't do video or photo work, seeing the bigger and expensive equipment just changes their overall perception of you. It's basically like marketing. People generally really like fancy things and they don't really like to be associated with cheaper looking things. So if you look like the person that's gonna be delivering a high quality product, you're the type of person that they're gonna to wanna to go to. Like for example, if you ever go onto a company's website and you see how beautiful the website looks versus if you go to another person's website and it doesn't look very good, your automatic perception is going to be the person with the better website is going to have the better service. That's not always going to be true, but that is gonna be how the average person thinks. I'm not really a big fan of that, but honestly, that's just part of the game and that's just how you play it. And of course, you always wanna make sure that you can deliver a high quality product because if you're a person that has very expensive equipment but delivers very average results, then you're basically gonna be known as the amateur with really expensive toys. And you have to remember that when a company or a producer is hiring a filmmaker to work on their projects with them, they are investing money. And when they're investing a lot of money, they wanna make sure that they're getting the best value for that money. And they want to invest into the quality of the marketing content that they're making. And it makes them feel a lot more comfortable with you when they can tell that you invest into your business as seriously as they're investing into theirs. So as you progress through your career, so is the demands of your clients. I remember a few years ago, um, I was shooting on the A7S II, and at the time, it was a camera that fit all of my needs. But as time went on, I started to work on productions where the A7S II basically didn't cut it anymore. Um, at the time, I had started working on more long form stuff where people required like, oh, I don't, I want a continuous shot of the entire speech that I'm giving or the podcast that I'm doing. I don't want any cuts in the clip and I want it in 4K. And with the A7S II, that's pretty much out of the question because it cuts off at 30 minutes and it also overheats if you shoot in 4K for too long. So that's the reason why I got the Panasonic GH5S because it's a camera that records in 4K and doesn't overheat. And the record limit is basically however long the memory card is. And I've actually lost out on work before because the camera that I had didn't meet the needs of the production. In situations like that, which you are going to encounter from 
from time to time, it makes it worth it to invest into a newer camera because people don't want to have to go through the hassle of renting out equipment. It's much easier for them to just hire somebody who already has the camera. If they have to go the rental route, then that's just more time and money that they have to put into something that's not the actual project itself. So it's a lot easier for them to just hire an owner and operator of a camera that actually meets their production needs. But if you're close enough with the producer that's hiring you, there's a pretty good chance that they're going to be willing to actually go through the extra effort of doing all these extra things just to have you on board. But that's not always going to be the case. And a lot of what goes into people's decision into hiring you is basically how easy you make it for them to complete their project. And when it comes to people's egos, it makes them feel a lot better about themselves when their production looks like it has a much higher production value. They're gonna be more willing to share it online just so they can show it off to other producers. And if they tag you on that, then that's basically a little bit more extra marketing, a little more extra street cred for you. And a lot of times too, when I haven't worked with producers for a pretty long time, but we keep in touch with each other on social media, I'm usually posting behind the scenes stuff and just showing off the gear that I'm using. And if a producer hasn't seen me for a long period of time and they see those behind the scenes posts, they're gonna be seeing, oh look, he has better equipment now. He has better lights, better stands, yada, yada. And it's going to give them the impression like, hey, you take yourself seriously. You invest into yourself. You're constantly growing. That's something that I want to have on my production because I know that I'm going to be bringing a very valuable asset to the team. But I also want to keep stressing the importance of advancing your skill set and advancing your knowledge because that's ultimately going to get you a lot more work than the equipment will. The equipment is a much smaller part of the equation. But again, you don't want to be the person that shows up with expensive toys but has very little capability of using it. So if you can be the person that brings really good quality equipment and can deliver really good results, then you are going to be a very, very valuable asset to the people that are hiring you. So yeah, in my opinion, it really only matters when you start working with clients and you start making money and you start relying on the money that you make as your living because this is your business. And with a business, it's really important to keep investing into it so that it can keep growing. And when it keeps growing, so does the amount of money that you can make with your business. So that's the video for today, guys. And if you enjoyed it, be sure to click on the description below to check out my social media stuff. And you can check out the YouTube channel to find more filmmaking related videos and have an amazing day. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.